Hey everybody, this is Furch, and I don't normally, this is kind of a, a, it's not a mail from a viewer, but it's a comment that a viewer left on one of my videos, and it does represent a point of view that I've heard, uh, uh, you know, a handful of time. And uh, it's it's always, I, it, it, to me, it, it I go through a range of emotions, from just kind of eye roll to exasperation to, now I should try and explain my point of view, and then usually back to exasperation and to drinking. You're making me a drunk, people. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. I was, I was there long before any of you came along. Anyway, so here's this, this message. I want to talk through, there's a very, very important nuance, except I don't really think it's a nuance. So let's get to it. It says, uh, I, I don't remember what, the video is about something. A lot of these videos are recorded like weeks and weeks ago, and people are like, what do you mean in that uh, you know, eight-minute mark? I'm like, from the video I recorded three weeks ago while driving down the road half drunk? I have no idea. I'm just kidding. I don't drive half drunk. Two thirds, maybe. Anyway, it says, uh, Oh, Mr. Perch, never change. You love to proclaim your love of comics, but then are so casual about the fact that these creators are gleefully intent on pushing away the entire customer base out of comics. That sounds pretty shitty. These creators of stuff like Dark Crisis and Nubia Real One and Hellfire Gala, those are three radically different creators, by the way. One was, I think, pretty much hailed by, I don't know, big portions of the fan base just two years ago for a pretty stellar run on what Flash and other things. The other, you know, Nubia, real one. No, I, you know, honestly, wh who is the creator there and have they done anything else in comics? I, I'm, I'm honestly asking. I don't know. And the Hellfire Gala, we're talking about a consortium of people that includes Jerry Duggan, but also a bunch of others. Uh, the interesting part about reading the health power gala, and honestly, is more interesting than the comic, was the fact that the writing styles were so disjointed that you could tell who was doing what page. It was uh, it was bizarre. Anyway, we go, we continue. Uh, the they, they creators that do these things couldn't care less about anyone's disappointment because there are no repercussions for low sales or canceled series. I think there's a reason for that, but let's continue. No one is held responsible if Hellfire Gala 2 bombs, so why should any creator or editor improve or try harder? If everyone stops loving comics, these creators couldn't care less because they still have their jobs anyway. That's in all caps to enforce the, a really important point is being made. I mean, it says, you say that creators need to be better paid, and that is true, but creators also need to be held responsible uh, when they're more concerned with their petty grudges than with making better stories. Until they try harder, there's no reason to pay these creators better because they are not even earning the pennies. They are being paid. Lots of all caps in there. Okay, so here's all the problems with this whole statement. Okay, so number one, when you say put more money into comics, I didn't say go give, uh, I don't know, uh, Vita a raise. I said put more money into comics. Those are two very different things. Again, this isn't a nuance. This is core business. If you put more money into comics, you will get better people who want to get said money. Yes, some of the existing people in comics might up their game, change, get said money as well, but everybody has to earn that money. The key, though, is you have to make it attractive. There's a reason why if you want to have a restaurant that people will come to, you need to clean the floors and make it tidy so that customers will want to come in and eat there and employees will want to come work there. If you have a, a trash pit, you're going to get people who basically can find no other job, and you're going to find people who can eat nowhere else. That's what you're going to come to. So if you want to improve comics, yes, you do need to pay more. That does not mean you go handing out raises to everybody, and, and come on. I mean, it's not, this is not a complex point. Everybody gets tripped up on that. Like, oh my God, you're going to give Mags a raise. Like, well, I mean, she's not even doing comics right now, so I don't even. there's no raise to be given. But, you know, what, what are we talking about? But on that point, here's a, a, a hard fact about comics. And this is a fact. This isn't an opinion. This is plenty of research. The average duration of a creator inside of comics right now is hovering at right about five years. Five. Now, if you take a longer-term view back 30 years or so, this number is shrinking, not growing. People are washing out of comics faster than before. And case in point, if you go back to the glories of 2016, 2017, and you look at YouTube videos, a lot of people, and I'm not accusing this particular commenter of saying this, but, but a lot of people who send these mails, they get their uh, view and opinion of comics pretty much from YouTube, not from actual comics. 
And I know that may piss a few of you off, but you, you, you know, there's been plenty of uh, comments that have been made that make it abundantly clear they're not actually reading comics. And granted, if you hate them, you shouldn't read them. If you hate some of what Marvel's putting out, why inflict yourself that pain? But do understand that you have a slight bias. You are viewing the industry through the eyes of someone else. Now, maybe that someone else has a good opinion, you know, but many of the channels are coming with a bias. That's, by the way, it's not saying they're full of shit or anything like that. It's just saying there is a bias. And, you know, if you look at everything through that bias and you don't do the research yourself, then, you know, you're, you're, you're basically saying, I trust the perspective I'm getting, which could be fine, but do understand you are outsourcing some of the research to someone else. And everybody has their own point of view on things. I do. Lots of people do. By the way, my opinion on comics overall should never be taken, you know, full stop without any validation. You should go check that stuff out for yourself. If you don't, you are trusting that your view of what makes a good or a bad comic lines up perfectly with mine. There may be a couple of you out there that feel that way, and cool, I, you know, you save some time. But by and large, you're probably going to want to have your own opinion. By the way, there are plenty of YouTube channels that will say the opposite of what I just said. I'm, I'm astounded. So people will send me like, hey, you should go check this guy out over here. He's really popular. More popular than you. I'm like, well, okay. But then I listen to it, and like the, the person's like, if you disagree, then stop listening to my channel. And I can't help but go, I mean, don't you want disagreement? I don't know. That seems like a pretty pretty dumb thing to say. Anyway, regardless, um, the people are washing out of comics faster. Again, if you go back to 2016, 2017, all the videos were talking about Mag's Misfagio as being the worst nightmare in all of comics. And there were tons of videos on Gabby Rivera and America, uh, that book. Um, then there's some Max Bemis in there. These names ringing a bell, what do they all have in common? Well, Max Bemis is writing something somewhere, but certainly nothing major. Gabby Rivera, I, th I thought I saw Gabby's name pop up as some random indie book that was selling less than 1,000 copies. And Mags, as far as I know, is writing no comics or, or doing nothing other than Twitter. Twitter is a new comics. So I, I think that, you know, I know to Mags in a band, I forget. Anyway, you know, some of the people that we were really hyped up about, these are going to be the worst people in all of comics writing complete shit, don't respect the customers, they're inflicting their nightmare uh, hellscape of a worldview on the customers. They're gone. Now, granted, they've been replaced in some cases by people that are worse. And that is where the publishing arm is broken. It's also where driving all of the money out of comics is sort of a problem. Because when you drive all the money out of comics, you are continuing to race to the bottom of the people who will want to work there. You get some people who, and I know there's a lot of you who listen to this channel, where this truly is passion play. If you listen to Mark Miller's interview, he clearly loves comics. In fact, he said pretty directly that he doesn't get paid more for writing the comics. He does not. Now, I'm, now I'm assuming when he ships the comics out, he's getting a check from the comics that are sold, but Netflix isn't handing him cash. He can make his Netflix money with or without doing comics, which for a lot of people who want that next Netflix deal will be a dream come true. But Mark is like, I love comics. I want to keep making them. That's, that's admirable. There are definitely people out there who are in this for the passion of it. But there are also uh, people who are in this because they, quite frankly, can't get a job anywhere else. They're, they're in it not because they want to be in it. They're in it because this is as good as it gets, and they're just hoping one day, someday, a YA deal or a TV pilot or something will rescue them from this uh, lousy comics thing, and they can go off to bigger money. There's those people, too. But the reality is... Yeah, uh, these people do wash out. A lot of them do. The other thing is, and, and this is going to hurt more, um, Hellfire Gala, by all signs, probably sold between fifty and 60,000 copies. For Marvel, that's a profitable, successful book. Now, we can debate all day long, and by the way, I'd be probably on your side and say, that sucks compared to where the comic industry could be. And I agree. But where the comic industry is today, that is a successful book. You can call that sad. Be my guess, but it is what it is. That's still the truth. That is enough to not, you know, not lose money and be profitable. And so, therefore, it will be made. It's why we will most likely get a Hellfire Gala 3. Although what you're going to see is the Gala aspect is going to fade 
and the X-Men vote thing is going to stick. It does really feel like they're gearing up to do this vote in new X-Men every year as kind of a, a stunt. And that, you know, so we'll keep getting that. But regardless, um, no, they're not going to, uh, Marvel's not going to come down the hall and shit can everybody who's involved in Hellfire Gala because the numbers are in the upper level of what the company publishes for the month. And so, yeah, they're going to keep doing it. Um, is that mind-numbing and terrible? You betcha. But again, I'm just, just spitting facts here. Look, um, the if, if, if I agree, by the way. So you're not arguing. You're, you're, you're knocking on an open door, as they say. I agree that if you do lousy behavior, that you should be held responsible. And I also agree that the companies are not doing that. Marvel Disney have recently, as this video, what, about two, three months ago, published new social media guidelines. Now, what you do notice, by the way, and, and you have to admit this, if you're being honest with yourself, the full-time employees of Marvel are suddenly much more quiet. The contracts are still blabbing their mouth out all over the place in some cases. Not all of them, but some of them. But you also notice that uh, several of them are, are getting a lot less work. You know, case in point. Check out how much work Vita is actually doing right now in comics. Here's a hint. There's not, it's, it's less. It's less than a year ago. Now, why is that? Well, I mean, chances are Vita wants more money than Marvel's paying. And so Vita's off uh, trying to get that money somewhere else. Chances are that's it. But also, I, I mean, who knows? Does, do Marvel editors get tired of fielding complaints? I mean, not complaints from YouTube videos, but complaints from, you know, people who might want to work or sponsor a comic. I know for a fact that one of the people who worked on the book, uh, you know, wrote in a complaint to, you know, the staff at Marvel. And, and nobody wants to deal with that shit. So, that, you know, there is less. Not zero, but less. But if you if you remember back again to the years of 2016, 2017, a lot of these same people are mysteriously gone today, or definitely out. Heather Antos, who uh, a million and one videos have been made about Heather Antos, gets shit canned for Marvel, heads off to do uh, e gambling or something, goes to Valiant, does nothing, is now you know editing Star Trek books, which basically sell nothing. So, I mean, you, you know, we can, we can talk about has she, you know, has, has Heather Antos been punished enough, but that's not like a career arc you, you'd wish upon your kids. So let, let's be real about what's going on here. If, if you believe the only justice is forevermore barred from comics, you shall not pass. Well, yeah, that's, that's probably not going to happen. But notice Heather is, is not, you know, taking Tom Brevoort's job and, and getting promoted at the big two over and over. Heather hasn't been handpicked by some luminary in comics who's created their own imprint and publishing arm as a stellar git. When was the last time you saw a creator say, hey, I could work with anybody I could in the whole world for this project, but I personally handpicked Heather to work with? It, it's not happening. So I guess my, my point here is certainly, you know, feel free to be wound up. Tell me, oh, perch never change. I, again, it, it just sounds so condescending to be, to be blunt. But, you know, it, 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 like, look, at, look at the world. It is what it is. Change never happens as fast as we'd like it. I would like change to happen much faster. I'd like that flying car that I've been waiting for, for you know, since I was a kid. You know, I don't, I, I, you know, I'm not heavily invested in Stranger Things, but all the same, I don't really feel like waiting three years for the next season of it. I think that our politics, uh, all houses, Presidency, full stop, everything is a complete and utter mess, and I deeply desire for radical change. But, you know, it's not going to happen next week. It's not going to happen tomorrow. It's going to take time. That's aggravating. But things do to shift. Like I said, the duration for creators is shrinking in this industry. It's shrinking. And, you know, in some cases, it's people who wash out. Some cases, it's people who are just not talented enough to move the needle and companies work somewhere else. In some cases, it's because editors reach out to people who are clearly not ready for prime time. They give them a prime time spot. The person promptly falls on their face. In some cases, it's somebody who's aggravated and tired of comics and actually can go get better money elsewhere and does. There's a lot of things that go on, but it's shrinking. And so the idea that, hey, all these people are out, you know, doing complete you know, jackass shenanigans over and over and over, and they're staying forever. It's just not true. They're not. Uh, they're, they're, they're disappearing. 
Again, how do you like that uh, Justice League by Max DiSaggio book? You enjoying that? How about Avengers by Max Bemis? Are you enjoying that? How about Wonder Woman by Gabby Rivera? How's that book selling? There, there's just there, a lot of these people wash out. Look, Cena Grace had an announcement at San Diego Comic-Con for doing a YA Superman book for DC that, from what I gather, has been in the works for a long time. But remember back a couple years ago when he was on Iceman and everybody was like, this is the worst writer in the history of all the universes, the multiverse and everything else. And, you know, again, Cena Grace writing Uncanny X-Men? No. Batman? I think he did do a Batman story, didn't he? I, I don't know. At any rate, by and large, time washes out these people and replaces them with new people. And I think, quite frankly, the bigger issue is that the new people who come in are often not trending better in terms of the quality. The sales aren't going up. So therefore, you need to make it more attractive in those businesses to get people in. I don't. That's not a crazy, difficult concept. How do you make it more attractive for people who take the business more seriously to come into it? You pay more. If somebody else has a different idea, by all means. But generally, if in a company, if you want to attract good talent, you got to pull out your wallet and pay for it. And that's what comics needs to do. Please, 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 for everyone, stop misrepresenting my point as, hey, they need to put more money in comics and run out and get all the current creators a raise. That's never what I've said. That's never, ever what I've said. You're being incredibly disingenuous if you're running around shouting that. Somebody did an entire video rebuttal against one of my videos where that was their point. Birch wants to give all the bad, the, the crazy dicks a raise. It's like, never said that. Ever. I said, if you want to get better talent in, you're going to have to pay more. Operative word there, get better talent in. I-N-N, -N, meaning new. That's what you're going to need to do. Alternatively, you've got a lot of legends out there who are so desperate for work, they'll work for complete garbage rates, and you know you just need to call them up. That's another idea. But anyway, there you go. I do appreciate people who listen. I appreciate people who debate. Again, disagreement is welcomed here. But please, please, please represent at least what I'm saying, at least vaguely to what I'm saying. Because... Honestly, everything I just said is the most numbing common sense ever. None of it of what I said is any kind of genius revelation. In any other industry, you know, if you hired a consultant and they came in and they, they gave you analysis, I just gave you kick their ass out the door because you're like, thank you for reminding me that water is wet. I hope you're having a good day. It's too hot in Texas. Thanks for listening.